Guys, something has just arrived. Look what's here. All right, everybody. So this is the big boy TSR 250. It is a dirt bike inspired lightweight commuter motorcycle and it's going to serve two purposes. The first, it is going to be my fiance's trainer bike. So she's going to be using this to learn to ride when she's not taking lessons with Redbeard Riding Academy, this video sponsor. And she's also going to be using it for whatever else she wants to do with it once she's fully licensed. However, as many of you guys have seen on my videos, my bandit is giving me a hard time with my gearbox and I need to put some time in to fix it. So, this little 250 motorcycle is going to be my commute motorbike, my ride motorbike and everything else over the next couple of months while I'm fixing the bandit. So, I was going to do a first ride and impression on this bike yesterday when it arrived, but unfortunately life happened and my filming was interrupted and I couldn't do it. So today is going to be a second ride, or actually third because I commuted here this morning, but I feel like the content might be a little bit more appropriate because now I have a wider range of roads that I've tested it on to explain to you guys what my thoughts are. So without wasting any more of your time, let's go ride this big boy TSR 250. Alright, so, let's get started with the ignition. The first thing that I thought was kind of cool, but maybe a little bit gimmicky, was this thing's ignition. See, this key's got like a weird cutaway, and in fact, it's got like a weird slider over here, you can see, that hides the ignition. It's kind of cool, but it might be a little bit gimmicky. Apparently it only works for this key and the spare key, but um, I don't know. Um, it is very important that I tell you guys that this motorbike is a very Chinese bike. Hey, uh, I've only got good impressions of it so far, so anyway. So uh, let's do the starting sequence, shall we? Because it's a carb bike. There's a little manual choke over here. But to switch it into the double position, or open or fully choked, or whatever you want to call it. Ignition on. I'm going to make sure I'm in neutral here. There we go, neutral indicator. Nice little uh, gear speed indicator, gear position indicator switch thing over there. Now it's confused, it doesn't know where I am. Oh. Let's get it into neutral. Okay, so start it up. I might have too much choke because the motor is a little bit warm. Keep it in neutral, hand off the clutch, hold some steady throttle. And obviously once the motor is warmed up you want to turn it down. I pretty much warmed it up riding it down here, so hey. Mirrors are sufficient, they could be a little bit better, but uh, whatever. So, let's take it away. Oh, so it's a pretty comfortable seat, uh, if you've ever ridden a dirt bike, um, it's a very upright approach, uh, it's not something that I'm quite used to, feels more like I'm sitting on a couch than I'm sitting on a bike, uh, but that's because I've got heaps of experience only ever riding the Suzuki Bandit, a couple of other bikes along the way, but my primary motorcycle for all the years has been the Suzuki Bandit. So being a 250 it really is quite a sluggish little motorbike. It, um, it clearly has an attitude of yeah we're going nowhere slowly but that was pretty much exactly what I wanted for a first bike for my fiance considering I was the dumbass that went and bought a 1200 as my first bike. So. So I'm sitting doing 60 k's an hour, I'm already in 5th gear, and I'm at a good cruising RPM, and yeah, I need to be in this lane, sorry. And yeah, I mean it's, it's kind of like, you have to understand 
that the bike is only going to want to work so hard and you kind of just accept it right it is a 250 after all it's not going to get anywhere quickly but um, yeah, it's getting there I kind of like the sounds of this little single just chugging away like a little bit of a tractor it's just like blop 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 also what a quiet exhaust man Yo. motorbikes are not meant to be this quiet I mean as you can hear this little bike is quite happy to be just chugging along doing its own little thing minding its own business um, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's quite comfortable, it feels quite flicky, like it just wants to go, it's responsive in the handlebars, it's not like an unnecessarily or unwieldy amount of vibration in the handlebars, it's kind of comfy, um, and yeah, I mean, overall, if what you're looking for is just a simple A to B, I'm pretty confident that this bike is going to give it to you. Sure, you're not going to drag your knee around corners and stuff with this kind of a bike. But um, I honestly don't think that's what its intended market is for. It's definitely made to make motorcycles a little bit more accessible for people. And I think that is one of the, the things that I'm finding to be quite nice about it. Is that it, it just wants to go. Like, it, it's just going. I mean, as you can see, I've only done 40Ks on this bike. 2.6 of which was from the dealer before I even got the bike in my garage. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just, it's, it's a really relaxed kind of ride compared to what I'm used to. <laughs> my fiance actually sent me a, a message this morning and was like, I couldn't believe it took you so long to catch up to me in the car. And I was like, yeah, well, it is only a 250. And um, I mean, it, it, it goes without saying that this kind of bike isn't made to be ridden fast. It's made to get you from one point to another. Um, and why not, you know, just take a change of pace for once? Uh, I must say, I am massively impressed with how well this bike seems to be holding itself together. Now, obviously, I've only done 40 k's, but uh, so far they've been a very comfortable 40 k's chuck it into this left hander here foot out quite a nice little rod Okay, so let's talk some specs about this little bike, right? First up, we have a 223.4 cc four-stroke engine. It has a claimed fuel consumption of three liters per hundred kilometers at 70 kilometers an hour. Now, I haven't been able to ride it long enough to actually confirm what the fuel consumption is, but I might add it in in post-production. It has a manual gearbox, sequential, as most motorcycles are. One down, neutral, second, and five up. And it has both an electric start and a kickstart system. So if your uh, batteries run low, it's got a nice little kickstarter over here. Of course, I'm not going to try and kickstart it because uh, I'm one of the privileged people that never had to kickstart a motorcycle growing up. Or unprivileged however you want to look at it it has got both discs in front and rear which is a nice addition over a lot of the motorcycles or at least a lot of the TSR 250s that I looked at in the past a lot of them were still running with drums but this newer model obviously has discs front and rear it's got nice 19 inch front wheels and 17 inch rear so it's, you can definitely see that a lot of that dirt bike influence is starting to come out on this motorbike. Its brakes are kind of sufficient, I must say. I didn't have a lot of uh, 
discomfort in the front brakes at first, but they seem to be bedding in quite nicely. I think the brakes seem to do a substantial enough job. They stop the bike. The rest is really up to the rider's discipline to make sure that they're paying attention to what the hell is going on. It has an 880 millimeter or 88 centimeter seat height. It's still quite a tall bike, I must say, but that does show itself from the more dirt-oriented or dirt-inspired motorcycle. 12-liter tank capacity, and that's pretty much it that I can think of. As I unveil my brand new beginner-friendly motorbike, it's the perfect opportunity to talk about the essential role that Red Beard Riding Academy plays in empowering riders like myself. Their comprehensive novice and licensed lessons are designed to instill confidence, teach proper techniques, and ensure safety on the road. From the very first twist of the throttle to obtaining your motorcycle license, Red Beard Riding Academy provides a supportive and professional learning environment. Their experienced instructors have a wealth of knowledge and a passion for sharing their expertise. With their tailored training program, you'll gain a solid foundation in motorcycle riding, master essential skills, and learn the importance of situational awareness. From basic maneuvers to advanced riding techniques, Redbeard Riding Academy equips you with the skills you need to become a confident and responsible rider. What really sets them apart is their commitment to providing personalized attention and guidance. They understand that everyone learns at their own pace and their patient instructors ensure that you feel comfortable and progress at a pace that suits you. So, whether you're just starting your motorcycle journey or seeking to advance your riding skills, I highly recommend reaching out to Red Beard Riding Academy. They'll provide you with the knowledge, confidence and support you need to ride safely and enjoy every moment on the road. Check out the links in the description to learn more about Red Beard Riding Academy. Some of the things that I really like about this motorbike. Uh, start off with the gauge cluster is quite very nice and clean. I really like this blue light that it has and like the way it animates all the startup dials like it goes up to 999 and all the way back down even though I doubt this thing can even reach 100 k's an hour but anyway um, I think it's just it's a really well put together clean and simple instrument display. It's not overly complicated and I suppose that's kind of nice for a bike that you might be buying as a beginner or you know something to just get you around town from A to B. You know, it's a nice little thing. Right? Like the rear is kind of shiny but it's really really simple which is one of the things that I thought was really cool. It's just, it's so simple it's stupid, right? Like I can understand how it comes right at the bottom of the market of all the 200s and 250s that I saw because it's just bare basic parts. There's nothing flashy, there's nothing fancy, it's just really, really simple. However, there is one really gimmicky thing that I think is extra nice. See this little thing here? It is in fact a USB port that you can charge your phone or whatever while you're riding your motorbike. It's connected to the ignition switch so you don't have to worry about it draining your battery while you're not charging a device but um, while you're running it's going to do exactly that. It's going to charge your phone. Let's talk about some of the things that I didn't like about this bike. Uh, first off the way they hooked up the throttle tube from the factory was just, yeah, I wasn't happy, hey. Like, I've adjusted it, and look at all the play that's there. I tell you what, I could turn this thing pretty much a quarter turn with all the play that was in here when I got it. Obviously, I went and configured it. Um, the chain adjustment was kind of tight, um, but it seems to have stretched itself out decently enough since I've put on the 43 kilometers since I've started riding the bike. Um, the dashboard here kind of doesn't quite line up, so there seems to be a bit of rubbing from this thing over here. You can see there seems to be eating away, but hopefully that'll uh, fix itself out once it's done enough vibing and it won't be such a big problem. As long as it doesn't cut the damn hole in the plastic, I'll be happy. Um, the mirrors could give you a little bit wider of a field of view. I've tried fiddling with them a couple of times to try and get it better. But um, I think motorcycle mirrors as a whole are just inherently bad. And um, I mean, 
they give you a decent kind of wide field of view, but uh, I think they could have been also just a little bit better, a little bit bigger, maybe have a wider range of view, you know, that whole object and mirror are closer than they appear kind of thing. One of the things I don't like about this motorbike, and it's no testament to the bike itself, but because it's a 250, yeah, I spend a lot of my time riding in the yellow lane because I feel that way it's safer than sitting in the traffic. I am so scared of being rear-ended by somebody, it's not even funny. So, I uh, pretty much approach intersections like here, and then I'm back in the emergency lane once. It is safe to do so. Check that taxi just pulling over in the middle of nowhere. Right. So yeah, that's that's pretty much how the riding is. Um, it, it's like just a couple of small things, man. That that um, sure a better top end on this bike would be better. But uh, look at that, I'm passing a truck. So <laughs> it's not entirely bad. And. Um, Oh, this mirror just keeps, like, losing itself. Well, that sucks. I have to check if there's a pinch in the top of the mirror, because it keeps, like, falling. Ooh. Okay, so we just cruise on the highway. Well, it's not even a highway. Mirrors suck, apparently. I'll just look at my chest. Hey. So I am trying to keep this bike a little bit slower because it's in its break-in period. I've got the break-in server for 300 kilometers, 500 kilometers, which isn't it isn't that good considering I do about 250 k's a week but I mean the first time I've ever had to do a break-in service so I'm not going to complain I'm just going to do it to get it done so that it do what it needs to do you can pass off off the bike hey thank you for greeting me I appreciate it yesterday I just got completely ignored by a guy on his NC750 because I'm just riding a little pookie. Chinese bike. Anyways, it's kind of fun, it's kind of nice. And I'm pretty confident that my fiance is going to have a very solid foundation learning to ride this bike and that was one of the reasons why I got it for her. Uh, and obviously I would have wanted a, a better, faster bike for her but uh, because of the bandit, things had to be rushed along a little bit. And this is now what we got to do. So yeah. So guys, I do hope you're enjoying this video. I want to say a huge shout out to my patrons over on patreon.com. Your support really does go a long way in making videos and content like this possible. And yeah, like, guys, I, I appreciate you. Like, if there is one thing I cannot express often enough, I really, really appreciate your support. If you're enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so that you get more content. Obviously, I will be making a lot more content on the TSR 250. Um, and I'll be making content of the fix of the bandit as that goes on. Um, Red Beard Riding Academy has in fact told me that I can make use of their workshops for all the work that I'm going to be doing on the bandit, which is really cool and I really appreciate that from them. So do me a favor, go support them, check the links in the description because supporting them supports this channel and then, I, I mean, I can't ask for more from you guys. I really appreciate your support. And lastly, a huge thanks to Redbeard, because you guys are awesome. You really are passionate about making motorcycles more accessible to everyone, making it safer for everyone, and I really appreciate that. Life is going to throw a ton at you.
Uh, but whatever it does, just remember, don't look down. Look ahead. And um, until next time, people, ride safe. Oh, don't be like so. Yer, my yes, on the scoff, nah. Yes, that's. Thank you. Unreal. Yer. Dude, just let the guy in, man. He's trying to get somewhere. <laughs> I ain't seen that shit in Cape Town. Only in Joburg people drive like that. Come now, Cape Town. And you still want to hoi the finger at me. You? Lady.